Hey, you, we are ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. All right, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Donna, and I will be your host and your moderator for today's class. And today's webinar is recorded and presented by Lotus Institute of Integrative Medicine. Here at eLotus, we have been hosting educational courses for over two decades, and we are proud to be your trusted source for premium CEU content. On behalf of eLotus, I want to thank you so much for being here today and choosing eLotus as your CEU provider. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping topics. The webinar will run from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We'll have a one-hour lunch break from 1 to 2 p.m. Two short breaks in the morning and two short breaks in the afternoon. And David will let you know when that is. If you're going to chat in the chat room, please make sure that you are setting your chat room to all panelists and all attendees. It, by default, it is set to all panelists. And when that happens, your colleagues won't be able to see you, what you're writing. So just so everyone's on the same page and everyone can see all the chat room information, the chat room chatter that's going on, please set your chat room to all panelists and attendees. Okay, and then um, as long as you're joining us for the for the day, you will receive credit. The quiz is available the next working day. So today's quiz will be available tomorrow. If you joined us yesterday, I've received a few emails about this. So you may have missed the you may have missed the part about uh, the quiz being available at the end of the day that was announced yesterday evening so once the quiz is ready for yesterday's class i will be sending you guys out an email so don't worry about that you also get four week video replay and that will be available on monday all right so i that that takes care of all the housekeepings to so today's class is part two of acupuncture point combination matter acupuncture point combinations matter clinical pearls for the five spirits emotional and mental well-being with david hartman david is a licensed acupuncturist and chinese medicine practitioner from brisbane australia and has been practicing since 1997 and upgraded his qualifications with a master's of acupuncture in 2009 he lectures students in the he is a he is a keen researcher and writer and has recently written a textbook the principles and practical application of acupuncture point combinations and he has presented at conferences and seminars all over the world he has a wealth of knowledge in the field of chinese medicine and is forever researching and learning new things so just to give you guys a heads up of those who are here in the us david is actually joining us all the way from australia and i believe yesterday he said he started at 3 a.m. So it is 3 a.m. there. And so David, thank you so much for, <laughs> for doing this. I know we originally planned on having this here in Los Angeles, but with the COVID pandemic and everything going on, we had to be a little bit more creative. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give David a big warm welcome. Thank you, Donna. Um, so everyone can hear me, I hope. Um, thanks for lovely feedback so far. Love it. Um, can hear fine, thank you. Yes, super. Thank you, Donna, for your kind words. Um, let's get this up. Okay. So, um, yeah, for those of you that were here yesterday, um, there isn't much um, overlap. There was a slight possibility that some people from uh, today's um, workshop were not going to be, were not here yesterday. So uh, there'll be the tiniest little bit of, um, I guess, introduction just to make sure that we're on the same page. But I can see that with the um, course numbers that there's, um, we're much more, um, a much smaller group today, not well, a much smaller, but a slightly smaller group today. And that'll be uh, good in a lot of ways as well for you guys, because it'll um, give you an opportunity to be a bit more involved in uh, question time and, and things like that. So um, today we will look at the following. I'll give you um, some guidance on the quiz questions as well uh, as we move further into the day as well. So today we have three remaining acupuncture point combinations or what I call APCs for short. 
uh, which we didn't fit into yesterday. But that's okay because um, originally this workshop was going to be entirely on just the APCs. And then when uh, it became apparent that I could fit a little bit more in, um, I tried to get as much of it into day one as I could. I think it flowed quite well. I got some good feedback from from a lot of you, and that was very, very kind of you. So got three remaining ones today, and they're quite interesting ones uh, as they were yesterday as well. So for those that weren't here yesterday, we, we define the APC, analyze where relevant, we look at uh, treatments, and where sometimes we'll also add in some case studies as well. And then we will get into emotional imbalance. So to start with, we're just going to lay a little bit of a platform, nothing uh, high end or anything like that. But I think that like anything in history, it's nice to have some sort of a context for why people are thinking the things that they're thinking at that point in time. So we're just going to have a little look at that quickly, compare the differences between uh, some Western philosophical thinking and uh, Chinese philosophical thinking. Then we'll look at each emotion one at a time. And we've got nine because the original seven, as good as they are, do leave out two glaring emissions, which are anxiety and depression. So I've included those ones in there as well. And as I mentioned yesterday, apologies again for a bit of double up. Depression is not like any emotion. I guess it's a little bit hard to sort of try and narrow it down into say a 15 minute chat, but depression is even more difficult again. So it's going to go for probably about half an hour and it will be um, just after lunch by the looks of it, according to my plan that I've got sitting down here that you can't see. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So each emotion will be uh, discussed. We'll look at the organ relationship, also the element relationship, typical Zung Fu patterns, just in case you're more a five element practitioner as opposed to say a Zung Fu pattern practitioner, trying to consider both um, primary fields of diagnostics, I guess. Look at some APCs and there's uh, quite a few case studies throughout the emotional uh, part of the, the day some really really interesting cases when we get to anger for example i had three gentlemen with anger all come in within the space of about a month of each other and they were all very very interesting so we'll have a little look at that as well we look at the five spirits as well same type of concept what you'll see with my slides uh and what you would have seen yesterday and if you weren't here yesterday they, they tend to follow a structure which i feel helps um, the viewer in a lot of ways because it's like, okay, I see the way that this is set out to help you with your um, understanding of, of the content, I guess, rather than it being this mishmash of information that's scattered all over the place. I feel like that for me would, I guess I'm structuring it the way that I'd like to see it as well, to be fair. Same sort of setup as with the emotions. We define the five spirits. We look at organ and element relationships, zung fu patterns, treatments, case studies, and a quick, like if someone was to say to you, um, I remember um, when I was studying acupuncture and I, when we were close to graduating, someone said to me, um, okay, so let's say for argument's sake, you end up in a lift and you start a conversation with a complete stranger. You've only got until they get to the floor that they get out on to explain what acupuncture is. So what's your sales pitch? So you might have 30 seconds. So bang, go, give us your sales pitch. And um, so this use in daily life is like the sales pitch for five, for five spirits. How fast can you explain it? in terms of a concept that actually is an entire book in a lot of instances. So I think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, Laurie Eve Deshara, I don't know if that's how you say her name correctly, but she's got an entire book on five spirits. And this is going to be an attempt to explain it all in 30 seconds. So it'll be interesting to see how we go. <clears throat> excuse me, my throat every morning. Mm. 
Then we look at mental well-being. So that's covering things like uh, poor memory, insomnia, uh, bipolar, schizophrenia, these types of things. And then I've got a few. Yesterday, we didn't really have time to go through some slides I had that were kind of what I called spare time slides, just in case we got through some information a little faster than I thought. So we've got a few more of them today, just in case. So we might even jump into those rather than do a summary of APCs, depending on where we're at in the day. And in fact, how many of you were here yesterday as well? Okay, so again, just very quickly, because a lot of you probably were here yesterday. Um, I live in Brisbane, Australia. It is 3 a.m. Well, not 3 a.m. anymore. 3.10 in the morning here. Um, Donna and I had organised to do this live um, probably pretty much this time last year. And uh, then COVID came along and decided that uh, that wouldn't happen. So we still decided we'd run it anyway. And thanks to Donna, bless her, we um, were able to organise it to run through this uh, platform. So still very excited. And maybe in the future, we can look at doing something live. Um, I have been doing acupuncture, started studying in 1993. And I've always been someone that's been interested in looking at things that we were taught a little bit. And you would have experience with this no matter what course you studied, no matter where you studied it. No matter how much content, no matter how long your course is, there's always going to be some stuff that just gets touched on. And you can't learn everything, but it's those little bits and pieces that kind of get briefly mentioned and then shuffled off to the side. That's often the stuff I like to find out more about. And perfect example of that is the eight extraordinary vessels <clears throat> in my it was a three-year course back when i was doing it um, it's now a four-year course in australia back when i was doing my course the eight extraordinary vessels got uh, six hours in the three-year course and the guy that taught it whose name happened to also be david he was a bit of a potty mouth so uh, he swore at the best of times well when we got to the eight extras Every second word was nearly a swear word saying, oh, the eight extras, you know, F and this and whatever, this stuff doesn't work. I've got to teach it because it's in the curriculum, but, oh, geez, I don't want to do it. And, and then for us, unfortunately, we had an assignment on the eight extras as well. And I think I got the highest mark in the class and I got 48%. So it was brutal, absolutely brutal. But what it did was, for a lot of us, it was like, oh, the eight extras, ugh, leave that alone. And, and that's what we did because he convinced us that it was pointless and useless. And so for a few years there, I just probably forgot they even existed. And then in 2000, I started teaching through the curriculum and sitting there in you know week eight and nine or whatever was eight extras. And I'm like, oh, no. How am I supposed to teach this? It's terrible. It doesn't work. Maybe I could just leave it out. No one will ever know. And um, I just went, no, I can't do that. So I went, well, you know what? I just got to learn it. So I've got some books out. The first one I had was an eight extras book from uh, Hiko Matsumoto and Stephen Birch, a little green one that some of you probably have. And I, you know, I read it and I went, wow, this is really interesting. And then I got a few more. And I realized that the eight extras had a lot of potential. And so I started to treat myself and my family and then my patients and fell in love with it and then grabbed every book I could find and learned everything I could on the eight extras. And then from that, it was like, okay, now I've got my hand on it. I understand it. And instead of leaving it on my computer, for me only, I went, you know, I think maybe some people would like to know more about this. So I offered it up as workshops and presented it at conferences and boom, 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 away you go. And, you know, now I could write a book on it. I've got so much information. And it's that type of thing for me that really fascinates me. It's the little bits and pieces that are often sort of just mentioned briefly or, or you know, don't get a lot of credence for it. And um, so, yeah, I've got lots of information. That's where this acupuncture...
something that we didn't really discuss. It was a little bit confusing as to how you construct the treatments. We looked at ways to do that, usually just through an author saying, use these points. A, a clinic supervisor, where you'd give them a list of points and they'd go, no, they're no good, use these instead. And you just kind of wrote, learn stuff. And you never really got anywhere with regards to, I guess, giving yourself the opportunity to learn how to construct the points because you just went off what other people told you to do. And then what happens if you have a patient that's not quite what is in the literature? And so that's where this came about. So the APCs were built off that. Jeremy Ross wrote a really good book on acupuncture point combinations. Um, I felt at times it was a little bit confusing and he didn't really reference, but that was written 25 years ago. So it wasn't really a thing back then. He had to worry too much about referencing. So the idea of this workshop and my recent book is, I guess, again, to bring something a little bit more obscure into light. And if yesterday's an to go by, it was very well received. So um, there's no reason why today won't be just as engaging as well. So I talked about the topic already. We can move through that and talked about the workshop as well. So, you know, maybe in the future we'll get an opportunity to meet up in person and possibly do some practical demonstrations of the APCs. A few of you mentioned chain and lock yesterday, wishing you could have seen that as a live demonstration. I get it. It's, it's a fascinating concept and it's a good one to show, the same as the kidney spirit gate, practically demonstrate you know, we're doing the best we can in, in a very strange world at the moment and um, bless you for your, um, your understanding with that. Now, again, just a disclaimer we had yesterday regarding the APCs, a lot of them are not new. They are classical or I guess pre-modern um, and also modern. Some of them are my own. And if they are my own, I do tell you that, as you would have seen yesterday for those that were here. Um, and so we don't change them up if they are what they've always been. Or sometimes if we're given a list of points and I look at it and I go, you know what? I think that I'd like to do this a bit different based on my own clinical experience. Well, that's up to you. You could look at a list of points and go, that's not the way I do it, but I'll do it the way Dave's got it there. Or you can go, you know what? A couple of those points, I'm going to sub out. I'm going to bring in these ones that I really like. And I'm going to see how this goes. And that's what, what this is designed for. What I give you is countless APCs across these slides. And they're a blueprint. You can use them as is, or you can tweak them to fit your style of acupuncture. Or better yet, you see a point you've never used before or a point you've not used often. And you could go, well, I'm not going to use that because I don't use that point. Or you could say, well, this is an opportunity for me to use a point I've not used very often before or never used. And so to learn how to needle it properly, maybe try it a couple of times on yourself if it's somewhere you can access or on a friend or family member. And then try it on a patient. It's, it's a great opportunity to, to try new things. The TCM terminology doesn't necessarily change much. Okay, why reinvent something that's already there? So the definitions will sometimes be the same as what you've seen in other locations. And regarding the treatments or APCs, what we'll do is you'll have an APC, which is like the blueprint, and then with the treatments, it'll be an APC used for a particular reason in which case the points might change slightly or the APC stands but a few additional points are added for that particular disorder. <clears throat> Absolutely love this quote. <clears throat> Excuse me, my croaky throat. Now you look down the bottom and you'll see that it looks like it was written in 1997. It was not. It was written 2000 years ago and it was written by a gentleman who was a friend of a guy called Seneca. Now, Seneca was a Roman philosopher. He was also a Roman senator. Deary me. <coughs> Sorry about that. And um, he was alive around a time when Rome had three rather interesting, to say it lightly, 
um, emperors, namely uh, Claudius, Caligula, and Nero. And Seneca was actually a tutor for Nero, trying to make him a better person. And um, I'm not sure whether Nero was just a bad egg or whether Seneca just didn't do a good enough job. Anyway, what happened in his life prior to that is he was exiled for something he didn't do, where he had to spend 12 years on an island in, off the coast of, uh, in the Mediterranean. And what happened while he was there is a lot of his friends wrote to him for advice. And this particular guy wrote to him, and as you can see here, he says, when I looked into myself, Seneca, some of my vices appeared clearly on the surface so that I could lay my hand on them. Some were more hidden away in the depths. Some were not there all the time, but return at intervals. These last, I would say, are the most troublesome. They are like prowling enemies who pounce as you, uh, on you when occasion offers and allow you neither to be at the ready as in war nor at ease as in peace. However, the state I most find is that I am not really free of the vices which I feared and hated, though not, on the other hand, subject to them. This puts me in a condition which is not the worst, but an extremely peevish and quarrelsome one. I'm neither ill nor well. Now, why am I putting a quote from a... Sorry, you still there? Why am I putting a quote in from a Roman gentleman about this type of thing? And I think if you look at it, you'll get a sense that it's absolutely perfect what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about emotions. We're talking about five spirits. We're talking about mental well-being. You can see Serenus was not particularly happy with the way his life was going. He felt like there were emotions he was struggling with. He couldn't get a handle on things. And... He asks Seneca for some help, and Seneca gives him some tough love, which we don't have time to go into. But essentially, I just love that quote because it's a gentleman that's struggling with life and he wants some advice and help. And that's where we jump in. Because Chinese medicine, whether you've done much on mental health or not, is extremely effective at treating patients with mental issues, emotional issues. We could have done a lot for Serenus back then. And um, so that's, I just wanted to throw that little quote in as well, because I thought it was just so beautifully written and the way that he, he worded it was just so, so wonderful. So we'll whip through this because this was discussed yesterday as well. I don't believe there is just one answer. And so the, the workshop's designed to stretch your thinking about how to construct treatments. So there is some consolidation, no doubt, but I think that that's a good thing. Try to come into this workshop with an open mind, and I think a lot of people yesterday did. And um, I may challenge your views at times or even be completely counter, counter to them. If I get through today and none of you are challenged or you feel that I'm saying something opposite to the way you do it, I would be very surprised. Because Chinese medicine, that's what it is. It has opposition. I mean, you look up any of some of the classics and there is opposition in that process anyway. So this creates debate and it creates lively conversation, which obviously if this was a live event, we'd be doing that during the breaks. But please feel free to email me, which I have my email address in later for you to look at, and we can have an uh, interesting conversation. So some of the point combinations might seem simple or well-known, but you might be surprised. There was a bit of that yesterday. That'll happen less today. Unless you do a lot of emotional uh, healing in your uh, clinic, in which case you may see some points that you use regularly. So an example of that is the four gates, which effectively treats 10 different conditions, disorders, and patterns, which often surprises people because they have an idea that it actually treats only a few things. So the goals of this workshop are to learn something new, to be reminded of something you had forgotten, 
and to reaffirm your own knowledge base. And it's great to learn something new. I also think it's absolutely brilliant to be reminded of something you had forgotten. Um, that little thing in the brain where it pops back up and, and you go, oh, I can't believe that's right. I forgot about that. You, don't, you often don't ever forget it again after that. And the reaffirming your own knowledge base, as long as I don't give you an entire day of that, I still think that's not a bad thing. So I'm going to have a little look. Some of you are putting questions up for me. So let's have a look at what that is. Just so I'm caught up. Audio a bit scratchy. Now that was about 20 minutes ago. I don't know if it's any better because I can change the microphone. Now is fine. Yes, he, yep, a lot of you were here yesterday. Thank you. Where are some of you from? I could get some, some people throwing up where they're from, please. Especially helpful are the eight extraordinary vessels for emotional health. Yeah, I've done entire workshops just on the eight extras for emotional health. Thank you. Notes don't have page numbers. Okay, we'll talk to Donna about that. Um, Austin, Texas, California, currently in Cairo. Oh, we have an Adelaide gentleman, which I think he might have been here yesterday as well. So he's up early as well. Lots of people from America, Michigan, Berkeley, California, San Fran, Sacramento. Canada, lovely. Welcome. Thank you. Lovely. Some places I've never been heard of before. That wouldn't be surprising, I guess, seeing as I don't live in America. How long have uh, you guys been practicing for? Living in Ireland? Yep, we had a few people from Ireland um, yesterday as well. New Mexico. So in 2014, I was at a woofers conference in Houston, Texas. And afterwards, my mum, who does uh, tuning forks, um, she had done a tuning fork course in uh, Taos, if that's how you say it, in New Mexico. And she said, you know, you really have to go to Santa Fe or you need to go to um, Sedona, I think in Arizona, Um so I looked it up and I went, Santa Fe, that looks interesting. So I went to Santa Fe and I ended up meeting a gentleman who ran the acupuncture college there. And so I did a couple of guest uh, workshops in Albuquerque and also in Santa Fe. Um, yeah, lovely part of the world. 24 years practicing, 20 years, 14 years in practice. Yes, almost 4 a.m. for Joseph in Adelaide. Five years, 20 years, 10. Yep, two, four, four. Yeah, this is good. I like the mix. 26 years. We had someone yesterday, 41 years. It's fantastic. This is my 29th year, so um, since 1987. 13 33. Is that right? 13, yeah. Wow, fantastic. Thank you, everyone. And... Is it, um, I talked about this yesterday and a lot of you are doing more than just the acupuncture. Do you have a particular interest in what you treat? Maybe you could um, let me know what it is that you like treating. I am the same island person from yesterday. Sedona, thank you. Page numbers, bottom right corner, okay. New to practice, lovely. Yeah, treating Shan, anxiety, depression, stroke. Yes, lovely. Treating post-stroke, some really positive stuff. Sports medicine and emotional spiritual acupuncture. I love it. Yep, emotional health, women's health. Oh, look, acupuncture and Chinese medicine, so good. Lots of uh, emotional complaints. Yeah, we, it's 
probably in Australia, a lot of people I talk to are geared more within, I guess, uh, women's health for pain, musculoskeletal, sports injuries, traumas, that type of thing. Wind conditions, okay. Fertility, yep. Drug rehab, lovely. I think that'll really jump in um, with the opiate uh, crisis. Might be better at PTSD. Yeah, PTSD, I believe um, there's a lot of what they call, I guess, battlefield acupuncture and um, ear acupuncture from a number of different people that have shown some good results for PTSD. Neuropathy, oh, you know what? I would love to see some amazing consistent results with acupuncture for that. Uh, it's been a bit hit and miss from my experience, but if you're getting good results, fantastic. Addiction recovery, yep. Super. Thank you. We won't spend as much time on this with um, questions and answers and things like that, but I think it's nice just to get a sense of where we're at today as we get into the day. Autoimmune, yes, lovely. It is still scratchy. All right, I'll have a look during the break. And I might get um, Sam, we'll test a couple of different options. Yeah, some of you are having, having okay uh, issues with the audio. So what we'll do is we'll see how we go because the break will be in about 45 minutes. So we'll see how it goes in this next little bit and then you can let me know. Thank you all for that. Okay, so... The three remaining APCs we are going to talk about today are one called Bright Foyer, Watchtower, Court Fence and Shield. Bit of a mouthful. Uh, the next one is Back Shoe, Front Mu Yuan Source. And then the remaining one is what's called Host Guest. So the Bright Foyer, Watchtower, Court Fence and Shield is not an APC. It is a quote from the Yellow Emperor Classic, the Ling Shu version of it. in the way of this quote. One D said that the bright foyer is the nose, the watchtower is between the eyebrows, the court is the forehead, the fence is the cheek. The shield refers to the area around the ear door, so around Sanjiao 21. For these places and in between, one would desire that, that they be correct and large. It goes on and talks about that if all of those areas are correct and large, then you would essentially live in um, over 100 years of age. And um, so that's interesting in itself as well, in terms of um, that they're looking at if an area stays healthy, that that will get, um, I guess, constitute that the person is healthy on the inside. And for people that do treat, um, like use cosmetic acupuncture, or you do, or there'd be some of you that would do that, I'm sure. A lot of what you see externally is a mirror of what's internal. So if the organs are healthy on the inside, then theoretically the face will show um, better. There'll be a better appearance. And that's what this quote is saying. So the quote is one thing. They make a statement like that, but then they just kind of leave it exposed because there's nothing else after that in regards to well, what do you do about it? And so if you've read any of the classics, a lot of them are a bit like this, especially the Su Wen and the Ling Shu. They tend to just throw out a statement and then often skip to something completely different straight after it. And then later on in the book, they'll re reevaluate something that was earlier. I mean, you know, it's... We don't have time to go into the reasons for why that might be, but um, this is a quote that's just sat there a bit exposed. So I've decided to have a little play with it, as is my um, thing I like doing. So in other words, the term refers to the eyes, ears, nose, mouth, throat, throat, face, and head. The most fascinating part is that the Ling Shu mentions this term, but then doesn't give the reader a list of points to treat the prescribed regions. 
So the reader gets the name and what it treats, but leaves out the points to treat. So why do you think that might be? Again, it's possibly bordering beyond sort of the scope of where we're at today and our ability to spend time on it. And I do talk about it more in my book as well, but I think a lot of it is that um, back in the day when you studied acupuncture, you would tutored by, by an acupuncturist and they would give you their home secrets and then you would use that in your clinic. And in a lot of ways, if these original books like the Yellow Emperor Classic were uh, multiple acupuncture authors kind of putting bits and pieces in together to, to, to make one um, home, it's, they're not necessarily going to want to give their secrets away to just anybody. So that might be one of the listed. Maybe there were points listed at one point, but that's since been lost. There's a lot of reasons for why that might have happened. Maybe they make a statement and then they think that you're clever enough to work out the point combination. You know, it's, there's a lot out there to consider. So what I've done is I've gone, righto, challenge accepted. Let's put a couple of possible combinations up here over the next two slides. Try to avoid using too many points that are the same. Oops, went too far. So you'll see that it's quite a few points, 19, and the second one has 20. Now for me, I typically stick between sort of eight to 16 needles. In this instance, if you feel like the person is robust enough to handle it, then feel free to use that number of needles. Um, but you could skip some out, but I guess in the end, if you're trying to come up with something that's going to cover that entire space, then you may need to consider using this many. And you'll notice what I'm trying to do is have local points so that we're ticking the boxes in regards to treating the um, face, for the face, but also we want to do distal. So local plus the distal. The distal are designed, and even some of the local, but particularly the distal, the distal are designed to treat the face and the sense organs and everything in between that treat that area of the face as well. So it's like it's doing uh, multiple things. It's working on the organs health, but also the health of the face and sense organs and everything in between. So for bright foyer, which is nose, we're looking at large intestine 20. As an example, for eyes, we've got yin tang. Um, for court, which is we're covering sort of the forehead, the head. Six for cheek and mouth, again, makes sense. And Sanja 21, which they mention in that quote anyway, around here on the side is the shield or the ears. So what we're doing is we're covering the bright foyer, watchtower, court, fence and shield locally. Now we want to do the same distally. So large intestine four is a no-brainer really because it treats everything on the head and face. Small intestine four will work on the fence, which slashes the cheek mouth. We've got Sanjiao three, which I consider probably the best distal point for any ear problem. So maybe a bit of bias there, but I've thrown that one in there. And then we've got um, Watchtower, which is liver three and gallbladder 41, which will do the eyes, forehead, head, and face. You'll also see that I've managed, like yesterday, to still sensibly scatter needles all over the body. So I've done some on the face, some on the hands, and some on the feet. And there's lots of little linkages there as well that you might've noticed. So gallbladder 14 on the face is gonna connect well with liver three and gallbladder 41 on the feet. But then further, gallbladder and Sanjiao are yang yang partners. So there's relationships locally and distally there and so on. There's this continual sort of linkage. Same with large intestines, got a distal and a local. So there's connections within connections. And that's where it's fun to look at what you've done 
with your patients and, and your point combinations. So maybe if you don't do that too often, next, um, next day that you have clinic, which for you might be tomorrow, maybe take your patient files home with you and look at the point combinations that you've done on some of them. Now they don't all have to connect, but what I like is that your point combination is all going to be tasked with a particular job. And sometimes it's lots of little jobs working together, working together as a team. So maybe you look to see if your point combination is working as a team. And then if you see that side of things, can you see little connections within that combination as well? And then if we look at the possibility of a different option. So this time, instead of large intestine 20 for the nose, I've got the other most likely local point, which is Bitong. Uh, instead of Yin Tang, maybe we could use Bladder 2. And Bladder 2 has the potential to do Bright Boyer plus Watchtower. We've got Stomach 4 and Stomach 8 this time, and also Gallbladder 2 for the ears rather than Sanjiao 21. But other options, you could even do small intestine 19 for the ears, Sanjar 17 for the ears. There's a lot of other options. Same for the other areas. Instead of large intestine four this time, I've gone large intestine five. The thing about that is large intestine five often pops a bit of a hit because most people will just pick four instead. And to be fair, that's not a bad decision. But five does do a lot of what four does. And so often if say someone that comes in to see me is pregnant and I'm not going to use large intestine four, I will consider large intestine five as its replacement. It's a bit of a generalized statement, but that's uh, one way of looking at it. Um, small intestine three is a terrific point for cheek, mouth and ears. And then rather than the liver three, Call about a 41. This time on the legs, we've got call about a 37 and 42 plus stomach 36. You'll see connections upon connections again. Stomach four and eight locally with stomach 36 distally. Call about a two locally with 37 and 42 distally and so on. So these are your blueprints. These are not APCs from history. They have been created by me. And they are, I think they look pretty good. And to date, uh, I have not done them on anyone because there hasn't been a situation where I felt like that's relevant. These are pretty new. And that doesn't mean that they can't work because logically when I look at this combination, these points do what's written there. And I've done a lot of little combinations throughout the years but just not that entire one exactly the way it's written here. But theoretically, it should be quite effective. So it's interesting nonetheless. So the next one is the back shoe front Mu Yuan source combination. Just check my time. Yep, well. Now, what we teach at college is we say to the students, if you learn the back shoe front move you on source points on every channel, you automatically have points you can use for that organs imbalance in all situations. We then caveat that that's the right term with you don't use them every single time for that organ disharmony, but they're good ones to just get in your head because at least that starts the process of your point combination construction. So if the person has, let's say, a liver disharmony, then you go back to bladder 18, front move liver 14, you source liver 3. So that's something to start with. So the patient diagnoses their patient as a liver complaint, and so they write those points down. Now, are they always going to be the best ones for that liver complaint? Possibly not but at least they've got somewhere that they've started so that you can work off that, that as a um, clinical supervisor. More often than not, they will be effective regardless, 
but you can probably find some that are going to be a little bit better in certain circumstances. Now, I'm aware that some of you will disagree with that. I'm aware that some authors disagree with that. And a lot of it comes down to often, whether it's a yin or a yang organ, as to which of those point categories to choose. In the end, it comes down to clinical practice and experiences that you have with your patients that shows you what points can or have the ability to treat. There's also a common theme amongst authors that the lower her C or uh, lower uniting points are excellent additions for regulating the yang organs. And I do agree with that. And a lot of people that I've talked to over the years and even authors that I've read will often um, sub out the yuan source points of yang organs and then sub in the lower her C points instead. So for yin organs, a lot of people are fairly happy with Bakshu front mu yuan source for the yin organs, but for the yang organs, they do Bakshu front mu lower her C. So that's an interesting sort of thing that I've noticed over the years that I thought I would mention in case you were not aware of that. So I have included those in the tables and those Bakshu front mu yuan source. So you'll see with this table, I've got it listed for you. Now, these are probably things that you've learned already, but if you haven't, it's a good thing to consider because as I said, it gives you a list of points to work off in your um, clinic straight away. They're reliable. It's a nice place to pack them all together because a lot of books don't put the table together in this way. So that's there for you to use as you feel um, as you feel and then i've got the yang organs there as well still a back shoe front me one source and then on the next slide i've got the lower her c and different points when you wrote learn them there's different ways of doing it um, sometimes it's easy like with large intestine they're both 25 the back shoe and front move so they're bladder 25 stomach 25 so it's that ability to just remember which organ channel is associated with, say that again, which channel the 25 is on. So bladder 25, stomach 25. I mean, all back shoe points are on the bladder channel anyway, so that's easy enough. But remembering the numbers and what level of vertebra it's at and what we're using. And then the lower her C points are for the six Yang channels. Three of the yang channels are on the leg, as you know, so their lower her C point is also their C point. Their lower her C point is also their her C point. So that's stomach 36, bladder 40, gallbladder 34. But three channels are on the arm. So they have a lower her C point on the legs. And you'll see that that's stomach 37 for large intestine, stomach 39 for small intestine, and bladder 39 for San Jiao. And if you recall back to yesterday, for those that were here, you might see a couple of points that were mentioned in the pinyin uh, chat. So the pinyin meanings of point names and having similar function. So stomach 37 and 39 had a little bit of extra coverage yesterday in terms of the relationship with large intestine points on the arm. And then we're up to host and guest. So this is a uh, point combination that was mentioned quite a few hundred years ago. Before we get to that, I've just mentioned that the Yuan source points treat anything wrong with an organ. But just to remind you, of course, the law connecting points are a bit different. They balance out yin and yang partners. So an example is that if you use the lung law connecting point, which is lung seven, it can treat the large intestine organ. Now it doesn't not treat itself because a lot of you are looking at that and going, well, lung seven is great for lung problems, which it is, but it has the added benefit of also helping the large intestine organ. Now, 
if law connecting points is not something that you've spent much time on, it'll often come as a surprise when you're looking through what points treat. And then there's this bizarre thing like that where you go, well, lung point treating large intestine, how odd is that? And vice versa, large intestine six, which is the law connecting point on the large intestine, has all of these things in regards to treating lung problems. So if you don't know any different, it looks a little bit exposed and a little weird. But often there is a perfectly good explanation for it. And invariably, um, it'll be that the point has some sort of special quality. So anything wrong with its associated organ and the law connecting points treat yin-yang partners. So when they're combined together, it's called host guest. So if I use the same situation, it would be that you combine your lung law connecting point, lung seven, with your large intestine, you are source point, large intestine four, for large intestine related disorders. And I'll make sense of that in the next few slides if you're not already aware of this point combination. So it was mentioned in the Grand or Great Compendium, which, which was written back in 1601. And the combination uses the yin-yang organ partnership. So five element yin-yang partnerships, your liver gallbladder, your lung large intestine, your spleen stomach, et cetera, et cetera. And the main organ being treated requires the use of the Yuan source point. And this point is called the host because it is the host of the disease. Now you do have to know this for your quiz. There is a host guest question in your quiz. Um, and the support organ requires the use of the law connecting point, And this point is called the guest. So all you really need to remember is yin yang partners and then be able to work out which one has the disease. So if the liver is diseased, then it is the host. And so you use the liver yuan source point. And then you go, what's the liver's yang partner? Gallbladder. So I would use the gallbladder's law connecting point. If, on the other hand, the gallbladder hosts the disease, then it would be the gallbladder uh, yuan source point and then the liver's law connecting point. Now, there are three additional law connecting points that balance out regions of the trunk, and these are not part of the host guest. These three stand off to the side. They do, they're wonderful points in their own right, but they do not have anything to do with the host guest um, point combination. And so what I've done is listed the law connecting points for the yin yang partners here, because I had the yuan source points a few slides ago. And then what I've done is also given you the host guest list. So this one is the yin organs. So that's on the assumption that the yin organs are the host. And then I've given you their Yang partners law connecting points. And I've done the same thing for the Yang as well. So what that's doing is it's just giving you an opportunity to take these slides and you know put them into your clinic so that they're an easy access point. And the reason that I say that is that's what I did. When I graduated, um, I didn't walk straight into a full-time acupuncture uh, career. Um, I moved from Brisbane where I studied to the Gold Coast, which was about an hour away, roughly, a drive and set up a clinic in a city I'd never lived in before. And so I started basically from scratch. And as I was building my clinic up, I had spare time. And instead of just sitting there trying to work out what to do with my life, I decided to go back through every single thing I'd ever written 
um, in my acupuncture degree and pull out the bits and pieces that I felt were the most relevant for me at that point in time. And a lot of what I pulled out were interesting quotes, but the big stuff I pulled out was a point treating this or these points treat this and built. Now, this is the late 1990s we're talking about here. And when I studied everything that I did, I wrote down by hand. There wasn't really laptops, certainly weren't any iPads. On the computer. Um, so I had everything written down and all of these paper folders. And so I started pulling out the bits and pieces and putting them into a new clinical folder and then used that when my patients came in where there was a case that related to what I had in that folder. And I remember what was in that folder because I just put it in there. What happened, of course, is the folder got really, really large and then I couldn't find anything and so my metal part of myself which is not a large part but is a part of what makes me me i decided i needed to alphabetize it so then i put it all in alphabetical order and i showed this to my students when i started teaching and they went this thing is absolute gold you need to publish this and i went no, no one's going to want to see this and they went, no, no, they really do, especially the point combinations that you've got in that folder. So I started to pull them out and construct it. And that became uh, the first edition of the AccuPoint Dictionary, which is this one here. This is the second edition. So the first edition was built off that process. And so I say this because anything that you pull out of these slides that go into a folder somewhere they are really, really helpful for you. They aren't typically going to waste. These, these um, tables that I, I show you are not often put up in books in this way. So rather than you having to do it, you've got it here as an easy access point. Let me see what the chat's been doing. And then we'll ask some questions and then we'll have a break. Maybe move the mic further from my mouth. Yep, we'll test that during the break. We have had a bit of rain here this morning, um, which is very unusual for Brisbane. Normally we get a five minute storm late in an afternoon, but it's actually raining. So that might have something to do with it. I don't know whether that can impact a microphone, to be fair, whether the internet's crackling a bit. Also today, my head is a lot closer to the microphone. So I'll look at that during the break as well. We don't need such a large head. Um, yep, so we'll look at the sound during the break. Thank you. Okay, so treatment one and two for the, I'm assuming the right foyer section, that's up to you. You look at the points that you like and you choose the ones that you think would be most appropriate or you could alternate or um, choose a preferred one and maybe tweak it based on points that you would potentially change up. So for example, I think, really think more say kidney three is uh, for example, then you would change those around to suit what you consider to be the best points. Do law connecting points treat emotions? Um, some will. Lung seven does. Lung seven is an extremely good point to calm the shen and treat a range of different emotions. But there'll be quite a few that won't. I don't think large intestine six, for example, does much for emotions. Love you to teach a class on the law connecting points. The topic I never really felt I got enough of 
and feel confident to use them strategically. See, I think moving forward, opportunities to do additional workshops, they don't have to be two full days. I don't know what eLotus typically sort of structures, but I don't see why there couldn't be little, um, you know, regular uh, one hour uh, workshops on various themes um, where we could do an hour on the law connecting points for those that want to learn more about those. And for those that don't, you don't come. And then a month later, we do a different topic for an hour and a month later, a different topic. And that way we can sort of give little snapshots of things. And then if people go, you know what, that needs to be blown out into a full weekend or a full day, well, then we can look at doing that. The three additional law connecting points again, are they? Uh, here, so RAN15, it's a law connecting, so it, it connects, but it kind of binds or connects all the front of the trunk. Uh, do one kind of binds or connects all the back of the trunk and Spleen21 connects or binds the sides of the trunk. Do you recommend I get both versions? Your AccuPoint dictionary, number two is fine. You'd be, I don't know whether you could find um, the first edition of it anyway. Bright Foyer is in my book, yes. Do you only need all the law and yuan or bleed and moxa? Yeah, now these are interesting considerations. Um, if you think your patient needs those uh, styles of therapy, please feel free to implement them. Certain uh, yuan source points and certain law connecting points would get benefit from moxibustion or bleeding. Uh, certainly some more than others. So in the end, it probably comes down to whether you think diagnostically it would be appropriate. There, see, my microphone is playing up a little bit. I just got a little thing on here. Um, oh dear. Anyway, I don't want to um, be offering something that maybe eLotus doesn't do, so <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I'll make a little note of that, though. Questions? I'll have a break soon. I was aiming for about quarter past. Now my volume is better. <laughs> it's fine. Um, Why do you think the bright foyer quote didn't come with a point combination? So some of you won't have an opinion on this because you don't know much about the classics, which is fine. Or maybe you'd like to hazard a guess. So you write down some answers while I write this down. Maybe it was only meant to help with observation. Yeah, fair point. More used for diagnosis and treatment. Yeah, can barely hear any sound. Ancient Chinese secret, you have to work for a master to, yep. Multiple channels cover these areas, true. Yeah, yep. And secret. Um, do you consider the back shoe front mu yuan source points valuable in treatment? Are these points that you have um, learnt and use? Yeah. And observations look at the face to see how the organs are doing. I like that as well. Yep, left up open to diagnostic differentiation. Personalized treatments, yes. Yeah, master left <laughs> secret till they thought the student was ready. So back to you from the UN source. Yes, I use them frequently. Yes, both for treatment diagnosis. Yep. 
Can you remind me what Bright Foyer watched? Yeah, that's just the um, face, all the sense organs and all of the face. Love, back to and you aren't source, yep. Okay, and then adding to that is this question. Do you use the host guest? Have you in fact ever even heard of the host guest? Use back shoe points a lot. Yep, they use them for various organs. Never heard of host guest before. Yes, use them. Understand them better now, that's good. How do I explain that well? Use them on animals in acupressure, fantastic. Forgot about host guests, so you have been reminded of something you forgot. There you go. Wonderful. Don't use it often because you mostly treat sports injuries. Yeah, look, and that, that might be uh, relevant uh, in that instance as well. I get that. Super. Thank you. Got potentially a couple of questions in a different spot. Yeah, so I have mentioned a lot of those. Do you find that the host guest combination is useful for musculoskeletal pain? Um, it look, it would depend on um, the organ you're using and whether you think that the organ is partially responsible for the the musculoskeletal complaint or the sports injury. So like I wouldn't discount the fact that if a person's having problems with their Achilles and their calf muscle, that there might not be a problem with their kidney and urinary bladder organs. In which case you might consider using the host guest on both, meaning that you do the yuan source point and law connecting point on kidney. source point and the little connecting point in the urinary bladder. Amongst other things, you would then potentially do local points around the calf and the Achilles. The Acupoint book for Canada, um, Elsevier, Church of Livingston is uh, a publisher that hopefully can deliver to Canada. I thought that was an international publishing company. Um, yep. Could you give an example of when you would use Sanjiao for Peri 6 combo? Examples of Sanjiao disease. Um, Look, it's a, it's a generalized comment um, with this. Here we go, time, yeah. So often with San Zhao, if I'm going to diagnose that, it's to diagnose someone that is multiple organs across several areas of the body and it's confusing diagnostically exactly what to do. So they might have some heart signs and symptoms, some spleen signs and symptoms, some kidney signs and symptoms. And you could either try to choose one or multiple of those, or I go, you know what, there's a problem with an organ in the upper jowl, middle jowl and lower jowl. I might diagnose this as a sand jowl condition, in which case then I would look at doing a host guest in that instance. And also then round that out with some heart points some um, spleen points and some kidney points. It's a very short um, example of how I might do that. Yep, kidney indeficiency can definitely make tendon issues worse. Uh, they're out of stock with the Acupoint Dictionary because it's become a print-on-demand book. So you, you order it, pay for it, and then it comes. Um, this is an ongoing issue. Um, I'm hopeful that can be resolved, but I'm also aware of potentially making it a third edition 
in the next few years and maybe moving it across to Singing Dragon because that's the publisher I'm currently with with my new book. Uh, heading into the break, I just thought maybe you'd like to look at some possible uh, examples of how you might use the host guest. So let's say the person is diagnosed with liver chi stagnation. So the liver is the host of the disease. And so you would do the yuan source point on the liver, which is liver three. Um, we talked about it yesterday. It's good. Great rushing. It surges energy through the body. It pushes chi through the body. The name of the point in pinion implies that fact anyway. Back to this, liver chi stagnation. So liver is the host of the disease. So you do the yuan source point. Then you pick the guest of the liver, which is its yang partner, the gallbladder, and you do the law connecting point, gallbladder 37. So you would have liver three and gallbladder 37. And then if you did that bilateral, that's four needles and they're all below the knee. So for me, I'd probably look at rounding that out more with some other points in other parts of the body or at least higher up the body. So we just talked about back shoe front mu yuan source. So why not combine it with host guest? So then you would um, have liver 14 as the front mu, bladder 18 as the back shoe. Now you're up to two, four, six, eight needles, but you are in the position where you're flipping a patient part way through which if you're okay with, great. Um, and you also have trunk and legs now. But what's a good point on the arms that treats the vitri stagnation? Well, peri-6 is the no-brainer there. There are other ones as well. That gets you up to 10 needles now. You have trunk, arms, legs. So that's how you would sort of round out your treatment. Lots of individual little connections there. And then this last one, as we head to the break, is a complex host guest where there's two hosts. The two hosts are spleen and kidney. So let's do them one at a time. Probably a way to be able to type this into a PowerPoint presentation, but I've never been able to work out how to do that. I should ask someone that's clever. Um, but anyway, well, let's work through it. And you can write them down if you want to, or you can go back a few slides and look at the answers on the tables. So if it's a spleen and kidney issue, then you need to do um, spleen as a host. So it is the UN source point, which is spleen three. Then you want the guest of the spleen, which is its yang partner, the stomach. So the guest is the law connecting point. And that on the stomach channel is stomach 40. So for the spleen yang deficiency, we've done spleen three and stomach 40. But then there's also a kidney yang deficiency. So the kidney is also the host of the disease. So you do the yuan source point on the kidneys, which happens to also be kidney three. And then you want to do the guest organ, which of the kidneys is urinary bladder. And you do the law connecting point on the urinary bladder, which I think is bladder 58. And check. I can't remember every single point in the body. Yeah, bladder 58. So you can see it's actually on this slide here, spleen and kidney. So the host points are your yuan source, spleen three, kidney three, and then you've got your yang law connecting points, stomach 40 and bladder 58. Okay, so I can't see any other questions unless they've popped up somewhere else. So what we'll do, oh yeah, perfect timing. So it is now quarter past, um, well, it depends. I know we've got someone in Adelaide and he's a half an hour different to me. So it's either quarter past or quarter two. We're gonna take 10 minutes uh, and then Donna will uh, spend a couple of minutes in 10 minutes time. So come back at 
25 past or five minutes to, but 10 minutes from now and we will continue. Thank you very much and we'll see you shortly.